Ugh. I don't know if this is gonna work. Average everyday uh, portable oscilloscope. Oh, freaking crap! Oh. Hey, what's up, everybody? You're leaning a little downhill. Welcome back to the Los Alamos National Laboratory stuff, high voltage plasma lab stuff. So, I checked out the oscilloscope, I went through some of the really cool uh, other things that I have here that I showed you and uh, the radioactive uh, uh, vacuum tube triode that was pretty sweet now we're gonna focus on this power supply which is actually the entire reason I'm even making these videos is because I wanted to test this power supply out looks half homemade half not couldn't find any information on it you know it is what it is so we're gonna tear it apart we're gonna try to hook it up we're gonna see what happens it needs a new cord cord is shot the output is actually a giant heavy-duty coaxial cable. I guess that's okay. I can maybe finagle an end on it or something. I don't know. We're going to have to play with it. So if you haven't seen the rest of these videos where I tear this giant oscilloscope apart, you should go see it. Alright, let's get started. Alright, well I don't know if you can tell, but well, this entire half is actually completely empty. There's like nothing in there. It's a, it's a half-empty case. Everything's in this box. So this thing's pretty interesting it says tested in 1963 or is that an 8? No, it's an 83 it does have this pretty neat clear back on it which is pretty cool and the front has a uh, Capta Scientific K-A-P and I can't read it it's kinda of scratched up it's on the back I'll show you primary lamp looks like it's broke the main lamp looks like it's missing and uh, the high voltage on lamp is still attached so that's a good thing uh, high voltage power supply the meter pegs red at 35 kilovolts and the DC milliampers pegs out at 1.5 milliamps uh, on the side here is a tag so let me flip this bad boy over and show you what that looks like oh, lots of dogs barking and things going on outside so let's look at this tag. Okay, so it's a high voltage power supply, KAPPA, -P -P Kappa Scientific Corporation. It says it's rated for 35 kilovolts at 1.5 milliamps. It's kind of interesting because according to the uh, front, it pegs out at 35. So I guess that's right, 35 kilo, 30, 30, 35,000 volts DC. Wow, I think it's DC. HV35 is the model number, serial number 129. Oh wow, look at that, manufactured in 63. 7-63, that's insane. Uh, now I do not know if this thing's been modified. I have no idea what's going on in here. So we're going to take it apart and we're going to look at it. Obviously it needs a new cord. It's completely shot. Uh, and then the output is a really heavy-duty giant coaxial cable and uh, you know it's got this coaxial plug on the back but it's not actually wired to anything or maybe it is actually now that I look at it maybe it really is maybe the shielding actually is wired and then uh, the center goes through I guess it is so the output is actually grounded to the case huh interesting okay you know, it's got number 115 on the side of it I guess that was a 63 August 1963 tested by it is pretty heavy but it's got a lot of empty space in there which is kinda of bizarre so let's go ahead and take the covers off see what's inside this bad boy yeah boys and girls here we are well this thing is pretty stupid simple uh, which is a good thing basically this is a giant high voltage transformer right here so let's get a eh, maybe a better lighting I guess it's okay so you've got a 1 what is that a 1 through 8 
and you've got four, one, seven, and eight hooked up. So that is the input to the transformer, okay? And the output is right here. So this output lead goes through here, and they've got some Teflon or uh, uh, PTFE Teflon liner here just to keep it insulated really well. And then look, it's just plugged in to this little insulated terminal block. Same thing with here. So this is the output. So the output goes through and it's the center of the coaxial cable here. And it just plugs right into this block. Just a simple, uh, it's just a banana plug actually. <laughs> and it just plugs into that brass block right there. Uh, so this side, look at this. This has this giant connector, okay? And it's connected to this Weasley little wire here that's black. I haven't traced the black one. Oh, uh, looks like it's grounded. So, yep, okay, the black wires are both grounded, and so is this. So, this grounds this. And that is probably to short the transformer out to make sure it's like a safety. And check it out, because this system is designed to be on its back, gravity is actually what holds this in place. So when you turn the power supply on, I imagine it kicks it up. And this is a big enough gap where the 35,000 volts won't jump. And then when it goes down, it conducts to it. Now, inside of this block, which is black plastic of some kind, inside of here it looks like, because you can see it, it's threaded through here. So this is threaded into here. I imagine these two are connected together. Could be totally wrong. Probably through a bleed resistor or something right here. That's my best guess. And then on this side, there must be sort of some sort of a step down inside of this solid block. I don't even think I can get it apart. It's solid all the way around. And then you have a pin 15. So I traced pin 15. As I suspected, it comes down here to the voltage meter. Okay. The DC kilovolts meter. And there looks like there's neon lights. Everything on this is neon lights, including the front indicators. So there's neon lights there, probably for overload of this these meters. Um, on the side here, I guess let's finish the back. And there is some sort of a resistor here, or something, 200 volts DC, that looks like a capacitor, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, your input. I mean, that's it, that's the only thing in the back. I did take the cable out, because I'm going to put a new one on it. So if we follow this thing down in the front, there's a relay of some kind here, a relay of some kind here. Uh, on the front panel, as far as the uh, big potentiometer goes, it's a zero switch, probably an off switch. That may even flip on this giant contactor back there. Not sure yet. Um, so yeah, just voltage going to the transformer, I presume. Probably really simple. Uh, indicator... Oh, that's a power switch. Indicator... Yeah, that's about it. Um, so, let me turn this thing over real quick, because what I want to show you is the label on this transformer. Alright, I'll do my best to get in here. And I'll even turn this sideways. I have a hard time seeing it, but maybe the camera will focus better. No, it's not going to. Okay, so basically this was made by uh, Universal Voltage Corporation. 17 South Lexington Avenue, White. Plains, New York, high voltage power supply. I'm going to try to read it. I think it's a BAM 35-1.5K. Uh, .5 K. And then it's got on the serial number, it's 35-299. Kilovolt says 35 and milliamp says 1.5. High voltage leadership, it says. That's the entire unit. That is simple. Again, all of these bulbs are neon bulbs, and I don't think I have any to replace the mains. This one will solder back on. Um, I don't know if this is supposed to sit at zero. Zero start. You can see it switches on and off. Uh, this may need the. looks like it's bent. It's probably been whacked, so I don't really want to try to bend it back. But, uh, I'm not sure. If that's supposed to actually stay all the way down or what? I'd imagine it's supposed to. 
Now, there's no milliamp-like adjustment, so I don't know if you're just supposed to pay attention to this, and if you go over the milliamps, you break it, or what happens. Maybe you can leave your comments and let me know what you think. There's probably no amperage, uh, you know, system on this guy. I'm 99% sure it's DC. Oh, yeah, there you go. DC output. So it probably... Mm, you know, like a neon sign transformer is designed in a certain way that actually allows it to not pass too much current. But I don't know about this guy. What do you think? You think this DC transformer is the same way? I mean, obviously it's an AC that's been rectified, but... Huh. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. I think my favorite part is the the giant insulator right here. It's pretty wild. Pretty wild. So, you know what? We're going to put a power cord back on it. This one's shot. And uh, I'm going to put what I have on it. I'd like to find me a longer cord. I don't think I have one here with me, but I'll look around. So let's put that on there, and let's turn it on. I really don't know what to do with it, because I don't want to just short it out. So maybe we can uh, try to light up some fluorescence or something. Oh, that just looks scary. Into the back. So, I got it all connected. I got it plugged into my fancy dancy three-way safety outlet. Oh yeah, and the important thing about this safety outlet is that the ground is definitely broke off in there. This way you know you don't plug any, uh, you know, you don't plug any wrong three grounded outlets into there. Safety first, guys. Okay, so, um, before we turn this on, I wanted to show you something kind of neat. These tags are actually aluminum with the numbers on them and then they're just wrapped around the wires. Kind of cool. So, I did not go with the military standard every inch. I went with the RWG standard of two inches. So, you know, zip tying every inch, just not necessarily, but two inches, very necessary. So we've got our high voltage power connected. I have no idea if it's shorted in here. It looks pretty bad. And I've just got it dangling up here. I don't want to have anything to do with that at the moment. Um, 1.5 milliamperes DC. Uh, 35,000 volts still might kill you. Okay, there is no fuses in this. Couldn't find a fuse in the front or the back. But we're going to turn it on. We're going to see if that contactor opens up or what happens. So, uh, yeah, here we go. Okay, primary is doing nothing. I have no idea if the mains voltage is on. I didn't hear the uh, contactor back there do anything. And I got nothing. Now the other one had a power switch problem. This one also might have a power switch problem. Hmm, might be my three-way safety grounded problem. Anyway, so it doesn't turn on. And uh, I got no good explanation for that. So I'm going to go ahead and do some probing with my meter and see if we can get it to do something. Ah, uh, you'll never guess what I found. Remember I told you I couldn't find those fuses? Well, I found them. And, of course, because this one's missing, we get nothing. So that's not helpful. So the primary, there's a primary fuse and a main fuse built into the indicator light. I've actually never seen that. I've never seen that before. I've taken a lot of things apart, and, you know, that's actually really smart. Saves you a housing and a space and a light and everything. You know, you gain twice as much space. Huh. Well, let's look and see what this bad boy is. Uh, 250 volt. Doesn't mean that it's 250 volt input, but uh, let's see what the amperage is. says a half, one half of an amp, and it looks like a slow blow type fuse. Okay, well now we know why it didn't turn on. We need a main fuse. Let's see if we can make something work. Maybe we have to get out our safety jumpers again. What do you think? I think so. 
Well, I pulled this out of my uh, parts bin up there right next to the amazing car, flying DeLorean, and uh, you won't believe what I found. This is exactly what I'm looking for. This is the front of this. Look, it even lit up. That's probably to tell you that the fuse is blown when it lights up. Huh. Imagine that. So let's try putting some fuses in. I can't believe that. This actually came from a man named Robert K. Hansen. You saved me again, sir. Rest in peace, my friend. Let's get a fuse. Okay, so this is a 610. Whatever the heck that means. 610, 250 volt. Ay, 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 ay. Sorry for the shaky freaking footage. Okay. So it was already on when I plugged it in, so. So there we go. We are probably making contact. Now let's try it again. Oh, jeez. Well, if that didn't scare you, I don't know what will. It scared the living piss out of me. I kind of wish you would have seen my reaction on my face. I think my heart stopped for a second. The rest of this film footage might be a little shaky. Okay, I have no idea what just happened, but it scared the living piss out of me. Let's try it again. Don't scare me. Ah, I get it. You turn it on, nothing happens until you hit the limit switch. Now you're at zero, and you're on. Ah, oh, see, it does make sense why they didn't make that a, uh, you know, to hold the limit switch down. Because you can have it on high, nothing happens until you turn it all the way down to zero. That's smart. That's a safety, built-in safety feature that I really like. So, now I know it's not going to scare the piss out of me. I know what's going on. Okay. So here we are. The voltage on the DC kilovolts went up a little. Let's go ahead and just see what we get. Oh, I hear Corona discharge up there. You hear it? Oh, gosh. Holy crap. Check it out. You ready? Oh, it shut itself off. Jeez. All right, one more time. Everyone's sleeping. Got to be quiet. One more time. Okay. Okay. Enough. Yes, it works, and it's got some serious capacitive discharge going on. <sighs> My neighbors are probably going to be looking out the windows in a second. Anyway, man, I'm a little shaky. I voltage, you know, on a safe level. It's okay to play with, but that is a serious gap. <laughs> That's like a two inch gap right there. And I wasn't even maxing it out. Wow. Well, now I know it does have a safety, uh, a safety shut off for short circuit. That must be built into this, uh, into this back here. Holy crap, scared the piss out of me earlier. You missed it, I just set the camera down, I got a text from my wife. It says, you are being loud, please don't get us in trouble again with the neighbors. <laughs> Kids' windows are all open. Just laid Kai down, Kai wouldn't go to bed. Uh, you remember that time when I blew up that giant capacitor bank inside my garage at like 3.30 in the morning, and my wife woke up inside that was 30 feet in a disconnected garage in the house. Okay, that's it. If I'm pulling too much, it'll trip. I'm at 370 volts. Let's go try to discharge it anyway. Want to? Nothing happened. I must have something wrong. Huh. Going outside.
Dude, that was freaking awesome. I think we're back. Back in business, boys and girls. Okay, I'm going to put the covers on this and say my outro. After many attempts of getting to sh trying to show you what is going on here, the neighbors keep uh, coming outside wondering what's going on. The neighbors have left. So, here's what I've got. I've got this interesting looking spark gap thing that I made a while back. So on this side you can adjust the final rod in and out and now on this side you can fine tune the gap. Okay, So this little device works pretty well. I made this spark gap device for uh, you know random things like this. So today I'm gonna actually use this power supply on this spark gap. And we're gonna see how big of an arc we can get. Okay, so I set this spark gap basically as far as it will go. And I want you to just kind of see the amperage and the voltage meter when I run this thing. So I'm gonna shut the door. Let's just leave the lights on for now. This thing hums really loud because of the way the transformer or the uh, uh, the old contactor back there. Ah, sometimes it hums really loud. So I'm just going to slowly turn this up until it pops. You can hear it. If you listen closely, if you listen past the humming noise, you can hear it start corona discharge. And you can watch the milli amperes go up. Alright, I'm going to turn the lights off. Oh, we blew the main fuse. Put a new fuse in it, then I'll turn the lights off and we'll do it again. Okay, I'm going to turn the lights off and show you the corona and anything else that happens. Blew the main fuse. Alright, back to the other video clip. Just wanted to show you the big arc. It's kind of fun. Poor lighting again. Okay, so some of you keep asking me, Russ, why do you have these giant high voltage insulators in the background? Well, you never know what's going to happen around here, okay? This thing is scary. Like seriously, it's a bit scary. I literally pissed my pants earlier, I had to pee anyway. Alright, well, I hope you liked that. If you missed the other videos where I tear down this oscilloscope and try to power it on and the power supply starts smoking, you should go check it out. Also, uh, I guess I put the other stuff elsewhere, but yeah, this is some serious business right here, let me tell you. Hope you liked this. I don't know if you did or didn't, but uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, and try sharing a video maybe every once in a while, you know, would help the channel grow. Okay, peace and love, God bless. You know what to do. Okay, I've opened up the gap. 
really big. I want to see this thing spark. Oh, there we got some discharge. I mean, you can hear it. You can't see it. It's going to go bang here in a second, though. Before it does, let's turn the lights off. See if we can see anything. Oh, a little bit. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah.